Welcome to another edition of Behind the Badge. I'm George Brees, the host, and today we're honored and blessed to have with us the Chief of Police, Harold Medlock. Harold, we're glad to have you with us. Thanks, George. It's good to be here with you again today. Faith plays an important part in your life, as it does mine, but talk to us a little bit about uh, your recent uh, visits with uh, Pastor Mark Routon with the Savannah Missionary Baptist Church, uh, of course located out in Cedar Creek. I know that uh, we'll be hearing from him a little later in the show. Pastor Rowden has uh, become a, a, a great uh, friend and a good advisor uh, in um, the issues that we're facing uh, in our city. Um, he, he last year just really, I think, was convicted that uh, the churches needed to be involved in, in working with the community, with the police department to, to deal with and, and address and stop uh, much of the violence that is going on among the youth uh, across our city. Pastor Rowden and the other pastors are really leading the charge in trying to uh, keep our young people alive in the city. We've talked uh, a little bit about faith-based community here and uh, Mark and others in the community who are really making a difference, uh, um, community watch programs, but there are other um, groups in town that are taking a very proactive and uh, aggressive approach to young people, in particular young men. And that's the Great Oaks uh, Youth Development Center uh, down on Campbell Avenue. I've uh, known Carl Merritt in that group for a long time. I uh, worked with them in the very, didn't work for them, but worked with them in the, in the early going. Uh, Bobby Washington and, of course, now Perry, Barry Duggan and uh, Alicia Dedman, a wonderful group of people. Mm -hmm. Talk to us a little bit about uh, that, the Great Oak Youth Development and what you know about it and what y'all are doing with it. Yeah, you know, what a, what a wonderful group. Uh, Mr. Merritt, while I haven't known him um, uh, very long, I'm certainly impressed with everything that they've done and humbled by the work that they've done. Um, their summer camp, which uh, is coming up, um, uh, is a great program for uh, us to be able to interact with the, uh, um, the kids and uh, work with them in a couple of rehab projects and, and homes. Uh, they'll do a couple of really neat uh, field trips. Uh, and and it, again, it, gets, it gives the police officers an opportunity for the kids to see us in a non-traditional uh, role. And that's what's really important about that program. One of our detectives, one of our homicide detectives, Ronnie Hutchins, uh, is, has been involved in that program for a long time as a mentor. Uh, that's part of his life. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's, so, uh, it's so exciting to hear Hutch explain exactly what, um, uh, what that program means to him. Uh, as a mentor, mm -hmm. not just to the uh, to the, the the children that he's involved with, um, and again uh, transforming lives, not just the lives of kids, but also the lives of a um, a grizzled cop. Congratulations to everybody who supports Great Oak Youth Development Operation Ceasefire Program. Um, uh, Lisa Jane um, uh, and that good group. I can tell you that we. Um, I remember. Uh, back when uh, Jan Johnson, Pat Rice, Tony Schiavone, George Barice, and a group of other people started working on a project, uh, Greater Fable Futures. Mm -hmm. And um, out of Greater Fable Futures, there was one aspect of it that a young man who was involved in our community by the name of Bobby Hurst got involved and got involved with Operation Ceasefire and got involved with a program which is now Fable Beautiful. Those were two of the things that kind of came out of Greater Fairway Futures, and I know Bobby has continued to be involved in that. Can you give me a kind of a overview of the ceasefire program and its mission? We do several things with ceasefire. The, the call-ins of our most uh, notorious, our most uh, worrisome uh, criminals, mm -hmm. uh, uh, trying to uh, provide resources to help them get a job, help them get an education. The resources are there that day, George. They're at that location. We don't talk in the abstract, we have people, the service providers right there, the schools, uh, Fayetteville Tech and, and uh, Fayetteville State and, and Methodist University, Miller, uh, Miller Mott College, all are there uh, to offer um, resources. Um, and, and then we bring them in and have a frank talk from uh, the U.S. Attorney to the, uh, uh, the, the uh, SAC, uh, the, the uh, Special Agent in Charge for ATF, to, to me and several others, the District Attorney. Uh, and we share with them what we know about them. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we're trying to do is, is again, reach them in a non-traditional 
uh, setting of a church, which is a neutral ground. Mm -hmm. Again, a great uh, partnership from the uh, from the church, uh, and and um, and offer what we know and offer uh, assistance to them. Then the prevention piece, something very very exciting that I'm sure Lisa will talk uh, more about with you uh, during this segment is uh, the uh, the EKG uh, uh, film and training that we have coming out in Cumberland County Schools for the coming school year. A phenomenal uh, video that was professionally done that uh, we used our local uh, uh, actors, uh, young actors that uh, were involved in it. Um, but one of the strongest messages that you'll ever meet, we'll be delivering that to uh, middle age or middle school age uh, children in the fall. Um, and then finally, the uh, the suppression. We have a, a a little unit called the Gun and Gang Violence Unit, and uh, 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 those guys go out and uh, they are hunting down those people who are violent criminals in our city. Uh, they are um, we are focused on laser focused on those individuals who choose to uh, use violence uh, as a a, a means to an end, and uh, our intention is that we take every one of those people off the street and out of our city's uh, path um, uh, to keep this city safe. Uh, through the efforts of all of the things we talked about here today, uh, for the first six months of 2014, uh, we're experiencing a, an 11.4 percent decrease in crime overall in this city. That's a double-digit uh, decrease mm -hmm in crime for the first six months of 2014 versus uh, 2013. All of the efforts, prevention, uh, outreach, suppression, everything that we're talking about here uh, today on this show uh, are contributors to, uh, to that crime decrease. And that involves the churches, the community watches, uh, uh, groups like Great Oaks, uh, our, our um, um, our base based community absolutely yeah. the operation ceasefire all of that sure. is is responsible for that well let's take a look at this great program that's been put together today on a point of personal privilege I, I just want to thank you for this program behind the badge it's a wonderful way for the public to learn more about the great police department the great leadership we have and you and Todd Joyce and others need to be committed for doing it well thanks you know we're committed to having a transparent police department that uh, uh, nothing that we do should be secret. We want folks to know um, uh, all that we do and to uh, engage themselves uh, with us in preventing crime in the city. Well, thank you for being with us Thanks, today. George. It's extremely difficult from my perspective to believe that a boy can become a man and learn the ways of a positive manhood without growing up around a man is virtually impossible. Uh, now they can learn from the street but it's not going to set them in the positive direction that we think they need to become productive citizens in our society. And so the first thing that we look at is the fact that if we can reach them young and Great Oaks approach is to prevent uh, we believe that by getting them while they are young we have the best opportunity to mold and to nurture them and get them moving in a positive direction wherein they become those productive citizens that we're looking for. Now we believe that is done by getting them at an early age where we have the results that we're looking for. We seek first to influence them where self-esteem is concerned because we find that a huge majority of boys like the self-esteem that they need because self-esteem leads us to what we believe is the second step, which is self-confidence in themselves. When we establish that foundation, we believe that they are in a position for us, for, for us to work on their self-responsibility. And with self-responsibility comes the understanding of the principles and values that takes them in a positive direction and not in a direction that puts them in the street, counting on a lifestyle that is developed by learning from others that also didn't have the proper role model in their lives. We offer two types of mentoring service. One is the one-on-one -on -one mentoring. That is our primary mentoring activity. Uh, that's where we match a boy to a man. Uh, in order to become a mentor, it starts with a man that is recruited. Once we recruit them, we immediately conduct a background check, criminal background check on the person. The person is then trained. 
the person is then matched to a board based on interviews that is conducted of both the man, the potential mentor, and the boy, the potential mentee. Once we think that they are a good fit, a good match, we kind of have them do a contract, including the parent, and they are matched for a year, and we get our greatest results out of that type of mentoring. Here's the reason. What we're looking for is a relationship, a relationship that, is, that will feature a consistency, a long-term quality, face-to-face -face quality time between those two individuals. And rapport is established wherein the boy starts to find a closeness to the man, someone to talk to, someone to talk about school, someone to lean on for guidance, etc. The fourth Saturday of each month, we choose a life skill to feature. And men and boys are brought together at a different location around the greater Metro Fayetteville area. Um, and they discuss the selected uh, life skill area on that particular Saturday. Some of those areas include, for example, uh, getting to know law enforcement better, uh, the importance of education, history and where we came from, health, money management types of uh, training, and from time to time we'll touch on items like manners, etiquette, appearance, dress, and items like that. Our oldest camp is called Leadership and Entrepreneurship uh, Training. Uh, it's a two-week camp, and that's the camp that goes back to 2007, so we have quite a track record with that camp. We generally have from 12 to 15 students in that camp, and it's a mixture of first week being dedicated primarily to the development of leadership, followed by the second week being dedicated to entrepreneurship. The other camps that we run are called our mini camps. We just completed uh, a financial literacy camp that was completed uh, downtown with a partner of ours, the Ellington White Art, uh, Art Gallery. On the 14th of July, we will undertake a third camp, that's service learning, and we will do that with the police department. The police department will host that camp uh, using Great Oak Boys who will go out and do service learning, uh, things around seniors' homes that have been pre-selected by the police department. And all of our programs have that mentoring theme to them so that boys are always in a position to learn in the presence of adult men. We hear a tremendous amount of talk about crime in Fayetteville, rightfully so. We know what that crime looks like. We know that it's getting younger. We know what it looks like out there. What I don't see are people that seemingly are willing to get their hands dirty. Let me describe what I'm talking about. I think part of what Great Oak does, we are down there with the kids, working with the kids directly, talking with them, working with them, driving them around, exposing them, et cetera. But when you have the majority of your programs that are at the 10,000 foot level and your kids are down on the ground, you need more programs that are actually physically, intimately involved with the kid. And I don't see enough of that happening. What I'm talking about is someone that's willing to mentor. Mentoring doesn't have to be the way that great old mentor. Mentoring to me can be just being in a kid's life. I'll leave you with this last statement. A couple of years ago, I went to a mentoring conference in DC. We got to meet with Michelle Obama, the first lady, Catherine Sebelius, HHS secretary, Eric Holder, the attorney general. All of these people were either currently mentoring or had recently mentored. Here's what I find ironic. If they aren't too busy to mentor, and nine out of every 10 men that I talk to tell me that I'm too busy, I find that quite amazing, and I'll leave it at that. Operation Ceasefire began with President Bush's crime-fighting strategy. In the late 1990s, he realized that across the United States, gun violence was at all-time high. So he set out to um, incorporate Project Safe Neighborhoods, which is a federally funded program, and Operation Ceasefire is our local name for Project Safe Neighborhoods. The core um, to Operation Ceasefire is to reduce gang and gun violence in our community. It's based on a three-tier um, crime, crime fighting strategy of suppression, intervention, and prevention. The intervention portion of Operation Ceasefire is to get the most violent offenders off the streets if they continue to reoffend. 
It's also to give them help and resources to help them succeed on probation if they decided that it's time to turn their life around. Again, it's a choice. So we, um, when we're setting up our notification call-ins, we contact probation and parole. We ask them to submit to us at least, we normally get about 70 to 80 of their most violent offenders. Um, typically they're gun charges, um, possession of a firearm by a felon, um, robbery, assault cases, anything to do with violence and uh, part one crimes. So they send them over to us. We run their whole record and we, cho we choose who we're going to invite to the program. Uh, we we'll send that list back over to probation and so these are the candidates we would like for you to bring to the call-in. They are um, escorted to the call-in by their probation officer so it's mandatory that they attend the call-in. And they basically, they tell the offenders that this is it. They're all convicted felons. They were really would like them to take advantage. They were picked. I mean, there's not, there's hundreds and hundreds of people on probation, but these select few were chosen to go through this program and to get extra resources to help them succeed. But then again, the flip side is that if you are going to reoffend, you're a convicted felon already. That qualifies you. If you reoffend with a firearm or even a bullet, it qualifies you to go to uh, federal um, federal court up in Raleigh. And so all of our cases are reviewed, all of our firearm cases are reviewed here to see if we can take them up federally. Um, prevention is a huge part of Operation Ceasefire. We, we do anything from setting up tables at um, health fairs or any people call us all the time and say, well, can you come and set up a you know, ceasefire table at our event? And we typically go everywhere that we're asked. But when we set up a table for at a community event, we give out free gun locks. Um, it's very sad to hear about the children that are killed by finding a weapon that's not secured in a home. Um, we're not an anti-gun program at all, but if you can legally own a firearm, we're fine with that, and we hope to give you the means of safely securing that firearm in your house. So we do have free gun locks available. We try to get those into homes that have children and guns. And um, we also give out information on gangs. We give out information on, on what parents can look for, you know, warning signs their child might be getting involved in a gang, and ways to prevent that. Um, another part of our prevention or outreach is also um, gang presentations to adults. We, we don't include children in that at all, but we, can, we have the means of going out and doing gang presentations. We have um, a movie night series that we've been doing since 2007 and we take our own movie night equipment out, inflatable screen, free popcorn, free soda, and it's a way to go into communities um, and the law enforcement are there the whole time. It's a non-threatening, laid-back atmosphere and the children can watch a movie and then talk to the officers that are there about any concerns or um, dealings that are going on in the neighborhood. Um, we've been doing that since 07 and we have another one in September at Kingdom Impact. Um, on Murkison Road, and then October 10th we go out to Grace Creek, and that will wrap up our Movie Night series for this year. What we're very excited about is our new program, um, Educating Kids About Gun Violence, EKG for short. We wrote a grant last year with the Governor's Crime Commission, and we were granted it. With Dr. Till's support with the school system, we're actually going into seventh grade health class in the fall, and we're going to teach them about the medical and legal consequences of gun violence. And in seventh grade, it'll be a two-day program. We hired a local, with a grant, we hired a local production company, and we actually made a film. Um, the film is relevant to how our young people, unfortunately, are being killed in this community, and that's by gun violence. The first day will be introduction. We'll show the film, and then the second day we'll go in, and we have some key interviews for, for resources that the um, instructor can use, and then discussing the decision points behind what happens in the film. What's really cool with the film is um, there's a, a shooting at a party, but then there's a rewind to it, and I don't want to give it away because we want to we want to kick it off in the schools. We, want, we don't want anyone to know the ending of the film, so to speak. So um, the school, after they, after they viewed the production that we had made, they decided that the material was relevant enough. They also want us to go into ninth grade health class. So that pretty much doubled our workload. So we will touch about 8,600 students next year in the Cumberland County school system. So for the two years, we'll do seventh and eighth, or seventh and ninth, and then the third year on, we'll just go into seventh grade. Our um, gun pledge is another part of our table setup. Typically, when we, whenever we have a ceasefire table, we give out the gun locks, but we also have the gun pledge. 
And the gun pledge is for, um, we have low certificates and we have a pledge that basically says, you know, if they see a firearm, they won't touch it. They'll tell a, you know, a responsible adult that they won't, um, you know, if there's unsecured, you know, if they see a weapon in a friend's house, they'll, they'll leave immediately, that type of thing. And the kids, you know, they, they, they read the pledge out loud. We ask them if they understand it. If there's any areas they don't understand, we, we go over that with them. They sign the pledge and they get to take the certificate with them. And um, many of them are will tell stories about being at a friend's house or being at grandpa's house or somewhere where they did see a weapon. They weren't really sure what to do. So it's nice to be able to explain that to them. And we have, we've had hundreds and hundreds of kids take the gun pledge. The Fayetteville clergy believe that the mentoring uh, of youth uh, to prevent crime is vitally important. As we note, uh, statistics show that there are many single parent homes and a lot of our crime uh, comes from individuals who typically have been raised in a single family home. Although uh, a single family home uh, does not say that the child cannot be raised in a, a proper way, uh, but that mentoring is so vitally important uh, for the children at a young age uh, to give them that opportunity uh, to be exposed to uh, male mentorship, uh, mentorship uh, in business, uh, mentorship uh, in their everyday living. Some of the things that parents or guardians can do to assist in the preventive measures for our young folk are they themselves being actively involved with them. We know, uh, for an example, in a single family home, that parent, that single parent, uh, typically works two jobs or more trying to make ends meet. And that youth is left alone the entire day. If it is a school age uh, child, the child goes to school, uh, leaves school, comes home, parent is still not there. So the parent's involvement as much as they can, or the guardian to be able to take them, uh, to be involved in PTAs at the school, to know what's going on with the child in the school, to get them involved in recreational activities across the community that they may be involved, athletics or whatever it may be uh, to involve the child. Community Watch, I believe, is one of the keys to the whole Stop the Violence. Uh, when clergy and the citizens of a particular community actively is involved in their Community Watch program, it has been proven that crime in that community actually goes down. Those communities that do not have a Community a Watch program are highly encouraged to establish a community watch program. And we know that if they do not know how to establish a community watch program, they can call down to the Fayetteville Police Department with the crime prevention and help, they would receive help establish a community watch. In the community watch programs, we have one in my community, and it is so helpful with the information you're made aware of criminal activity that may be going on in your community. Uh, when you have your watch commanders, your block captains, people who are actively roaming through the community, it helps not only the community, but it helps law enforcement as well because they cannot be everywhere at the same time although law enforcement are patrolling the community, with a good community watch program, you have that watchful eye in your community. You know the people in your community much better than law enforcement. So if you see someone that seemed to be strange in your community, immediately you can report that to law enforcement. Back in November uh, of 2013, uh, the Fayetteville clergy uh, decided that enough is enough. And we had a rally uh, to talk about stopping the violence. At that particular time, there were three active murders uh, in the Cumberland County and Fayetteville area. And we had the rally and brought together hundreds of people who felt our pain because these were parents of some of the victims and also these were parents of some of the perpetrators. And with the clergy involvement, as we know, oftentimes people are more comfortable talking with their pastor or talking with the clergy than they are to come to a law enforcement uh, person. 
And when we have these violent crimes, some of these same persons are members of some church, some synagogue, or some mosque. So therefore, if the clergy is involved and those citizens or those individuals who have committed crimes or have been victims of crime or who have witnessed a crime, they are more comfortable tenderly to be more comfortable talking with a clergy in the community. Therefore, we believe we can ask them to come to us, talk to us. I've personally had individuals who were wanted for a crime and they came to me and I encouraged them to turn themselves in. And because I was able to let them know that, you know, this is the right thing to do. Yes, you committed a crime and you have to face the crime that you committed. They were more comfortable. In fact, the individual asked, they said, Pastor, would you go with me as I turn myself in? So clergy involvement is critically important. And I believe the more clergy and the faith-based community is involved, I truly believe that the crime in our city, in our county, can go down and will go down because of the relationship and the collaboration that clergy have with law enforcement. Perfect. We believe that the gun buyback program with clergy involvement will significantly help individuals to come and turn in weapons without the fear of having to go to the Fedville Police Department or to the Sheriff's Office to turn it in. And we're willing to host a gun buyback to have individuals in the community come to one of the local churches, no questions asked, and to be able to offer an incentive uh, for individuals who are willing to turn their weapons in. We desperately need to get weapons, illegal weapons off the street, uh, weapons in the home. We also believe that training uh, for individuals who own weapons in their homes to understand when children are in the home, to understand how to uh, safeguard that weapon from children, for we have had some uh, uh, unnecessary deaths uh, of children and infants because the weapons was not properly uh, stored in the home. So guns off the street is so very important. Uh, we don't believe in or trying to uh, take away anyone's Second Amendment right, but we do know that uh, with the number of illegal weapons on the street, the number of guns on the street, uh, it only adds up and will lead to gun violence in our community. Okay. With the collaboration with faith-based uh, and law enforcement, other elected officials, business owners, and community leaders that in our area of Fedville and Cumberland County, that we can and we will help to stop the violence in our city. Uh, we're so grateful for the partnership uh, with the education with our superintendent uh, of the Cumberland County school system. We're grateful for the support and the collaboration with our district attorney's office and those who have partnered with us to say, yes, we're with you all. We support you as a team to stop the violence.